There is no spying on Americans. Uh, you know, we don't have a domestic spying program. What we do have are some mechanisms where we can track uh, a phone number or an right. email address. That President Obama last night with Jay Leno taking a really serious approach to all of this. Uh, in a continuing a debate within political circles and the country at large, I think, about uh, how Edward Snowden in Russia should be considered. Is he someone who delivered a lot of information to the public we wouldn't have all otherwise known about how in information is gathered, potentially about us? So is he kind of a hero or is he a traitor? Uh, a lot of people have weighed in on this. Uh, there's this particular way of uh, becoming a whistleblower and in matters of national security and, and when it comes to classified information, technically you're not a whistleblower. You're not protected uh, after having revealed secret information by claiming you're a whistleblower. That's not what, how the, the Federal Whistleblower Protection Act, that's not how it goes. Uh, but we're going to talk about it with Custer, uh, Congressman Justin Amash, Republican from Michigan. He's chairman of the House Liberty Caucus, and he has grave concerns about how the NSA operates, especially against uh, innocent Americans. He joins us now. Congressman, great to talk thanks to you, for, sir. How are you? Thanks. Uh, thanks, Laura. Great to be on here. Um, so you heard the president. He went on a very serious forum last night uh, to discuss this <laughs> issue. Uh, your reaction to what he said? Well, I think he misled people when he said they can track a phone number and email connected to a uh, terrorist attack. Um, terrorist threat. Tracking, he said terrorist threat. Yeah, terrorist threat. They're, they're tracking, collecting uh, information on every single American in the United States. Um, so uh, regardless of your connection to uh, any sort of terrorist threat, the government has a database, and it's gathering everyone's uh, phone call information, uh, that's uh, who you're calling, what time you're calling, uh, and all sorts of information about uh, what device you're using and, and uh, other identifying information, even if it's not your name. The, uh, the former Attorney General, Mike Mukasey, came on the show a couple days ago, and he was adamant that the way people like you are describing this program is uh, irresponsible. He used the term irresponsible, inaccurate, and misrepresenting the situation. Uh, that you do not have a reasonable expectation of privacy uh, regarding uh, duration of phone calls uh, related to the number that you use. Uh, phone companies keep records for some period of time, and that, that is all the information that the government has access to. It uh, doesn't even have your name. It only has your phone number, and that number only becomes uh, – uh, triggers more action – after the government goes to the FISA court, if indeed there's reason uh, to receive a warrant, to then uh, further uh, delve into that for more information, perhaps content monitoring and so forth. What's your reaction to that comment? Well, that's first of all, that's a misrepresentation of how it works. Well, he's a former um, I, attorney I to, general. He I, knows a little bit about how it works, I think. But go ahead. I, I, go, to, I go to the briefings, and I, I think I have the information about how it works. So how do you disagree I'm, with his extremely, point here? How do I disagree with his point? Well, mm -hmm. first of all, he says there's no expectation of privacy, which is a ridiculous statement. I represent real people. He acts as though uh, there's some objective standard that uh, he, as uh, a former um, attorney general or, or a former uh, administration official, I hear this all the time from bureaucrats. They think they can tell the American public what they have an expectation of privacy in. And I will tell you, I go to my town halls and meetings, and people expect that their phone calls are kept private. Who they're calling is a private matter. It's not for the government to, to decipher. And when they tell you that uh, they're not collecting content, even if that's true in this case, the legal theory they're operating under allows them to collect content. That's just a policy decision that they're making, not to collect content. And in fact, with emails, we know this for a fact, uh, even though um, there's there's no bulk email collection program, according to uh, what the uh, NSA has told us, they can go after emails that are six months old and get your content without a warrant. Um, that's that's how the whole Petraeus uh, issue came down. They can go after 
uh, emails that are more than six months old and grab your content, anyone. Well, that's only after they go to the FISA court. Yeah, that's that's true, but without a warrant. No, no, no. I don't believe that. I, I, I'm going to yeah. ask. I'm going to on email uh, on email. Yes, six email content that is more than six months old. Okay, no email warrant. email content that's more than six months old. You say that is stored by the you know whatever the email providers are. You can be Yahoo or Google or AOL or whatever. If it's more than six months old, you're saying the government can read it, keep it, store it, and use it against. Innocent Americans without having uh, received or gotten any warrant from the FISA they, court. Is, is, is that what you're saying? Can, yes. Yes. They can obtain it without a warrant. Yes. Okay. I, that's that's, that's fact, new to me. That's I, why, I don't know that's that. Why there's legislation, that's why there's legislation right now going through the House and Senate on this issue. Uh, Patrick Leahy has been running uh, legislation through the Judiciary Committee. It's being held up on this very issue. And uh, my friend Kevin Yoder from Kansas has legislation on this issue. So um, this is, I mean, it's a separate, it's a separate program from the. Yeah, it's not the NSA. Collection. So what, what is that no, running? What is that program running, r- running out of? Because I want to keep the issue separate. So that's because, but sure. I'm right. It's not part of what the NSA is doing. It's part of what. Uh, it's it's a it's a government pro it's a general government program so oh, okay. um, it could be used by it could be used by local law enforcement it could be used by anyone FBI but the bottom ATF yeah, the, mm-hmm. bo- sure the bottom line is what I'm what I'm trying to express here is when they tell you that they can't get content mm-hmm. that is a policy based decision that's not because they think the Constitution prohibits them from getting your content and that's important for the American people to recognize. Uh, because when when they make it sound like, look, we're not getting content because we'd be prohibited from doing that, that's not true. That's just an internal decision that they're making. So uh, the the concern Americans should have here, and they do have this concern, I know because I go to lots of town halls, the concern they should have here is that it it expands. It starts as one thing and it mm-hmm. spreads to something else. And soon the government is collecting all sorts of information, including possibly your content. Well, I I think the slippery slope is something to be extremely concerned about because we've seen massive abuses. And and I I was reassured that the NSA's, uh, just sticking on the NSA issue, that they are completely walled off from other agencies. Other agencies wish they could get their data, but they can't. And that you know, HHS or IRS, is not, they're not going to get the data from the NSA. That it's completely separate. It's an intelligence matter. It's a counterterror, uh, counterterror initiative, and it's not part of the other uh, other part of the government's collection efforts. Uh, uh, that's I'm just telling although, you what's being said. I'm sure you've heard it too. Yeah, but oh, and, but to be and you saw probably the story the other day about the DEA getting uh, information from the NSA. The uh, the bottom line is. Um, the way the statutes are written, any information that is collected by the NSA can be shared with the executive branch, can be shared with other agencies. So even if uh, in, in certain cases, say, they're not targeting the content of Americans, if they inadvertently come upon some content that they think is uh, perhaps related to some criminal matter, mm-hmm. they can use that in a criminal investigation. So the question becomes, how often are they, even in the cases where they're not targeting, how often are they uh, coming upon content um, inadvertently? And, you know, I've asked this question. Uh, We sent a letter to the NSA and FBI on this very issue, and we haven't gotten an answer yet. Uh, Greenwald wrote something about how uh, Glenn Greenwald in The Guardian has, has written about how members of Congress have been denied access to basic information about the NSA. Uh, and he goes through documents, I guess, provided to two House members, demonstrate how they're blocked from some meaningful mm-hmm. oversight. What's your experience in uh, gaining access to this type of critical information? Well, that, I mean, that's a great that's a great question. And the point is, uh, I think this is another area where the administration and other defenders of these programs have been misleading people. Uh, we've received briefings on these items, and I've attended. Uh, if not all the briefings, most of the briefings over the past uh, couple of years. And what you find is that they don't volunteer really important information. So you go to a briefing, they'll use a lot of technical terms, and they don't volunteer what the term of art means. So you don't know mm. when they talk about, for example, say, um, 
something like bulk collection. You don't know what that means. And they don't really get into the details of it. And you're given a, a brief period of time. You have to ask uh -huh. questions, and there's a queue and all that. The, the point is we go to these briefings, and we have to maybe go to three or four briefings and phrase our question in exactly the right way before they'll give us a straight answer. So actually one of the uh, interesting things that's happened is I'll go to one briefing, ask a question. I, I'll, get a, I'll get an answer. I'll think about the answer that was given to me, and did I ask the question in the right way? I'll go to the next briefing and refine it a little bit. I'll get another answer. I'll think about that. I'll go back, come back to another briefing, refine the question again. After you've asked the question three or four times and refined it, you find that the answer is very different from the initial question you asked. And that's because they don't volunteer the information. If you're slightly off, if you use the wrong um, no, you know, acronym, no. if you say... If, if you say, is the yeah. NSA doing something, but in fact the government's doing it, not the NSA, they, yeah. you know, they'll tell you no or yeah, yes. Yeah, I get it. I mean that tension between the executive and the legislative branches, back in the last two years in the Reagan administration when I worked in the uh, education department and then at the White House, that, was, that, that that's always the case. I've got to say the executive branch never wants to give Congress anything, and Reagan, yeah. Reagan, <laughs> Reagan wasn't too thrilled about having to send all his people up there either, but I, I get your point. Uh, Carl Rove said something about you recently, and I'd like uh, you to respond if you don't mind. Let's listen. National Journal put out its ratings of the most liberal to conservative Republicans. The most liberal Republican is Justin Amash of, of Michigan. Far more, far more liberal than any other Republican. And why? Because he is a 100% purist libertarian. And if it's not entirely perfect, I'm voting with Nancy Pelosi, which is how he ends up with all these liberal ratings. I vote no. Mm, your reaction? Well, it's, it's ridiculous on several fronts. First, I vote yes most of the time. Uh, I'm one of the most independent members of Congress, but I vote yes most of the time. Uh, second, I vote least often with Nancy Pelosi of any Republican in Congress. I have the I have the least similar voting record to Nancy Pelosi. You can look that up. But that's uh, public information. Now, what you, what's going on with first, Rove? I mean, I mean, what's going on with first, Rove? I mean, there's this tension. You had Christie say y'all are dangerous. Rove comes out and says you, you're just a liberal in 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 Republican yeah. uh, clothing. Well, and so what what's really well, at the heart of this? You forget the, the, me, the intric intricacies. What's at the heart of this tension? Well, I think there's a, there's a new uh, strain of republicanism. It's a libertarian uh, side of republicanism. It's 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 not um, new historically. There's always been this libertarian uh, uh, sort of uh, base in the Republican Party. I think Ronald Reagan actually came out of that. But um, there's this tension between the Bush Republicans of the last 10 or 20 years and uh, the the newer Republicans who are getting elected. And so Rove is just seeing a rising well, tide of new leaders, and and he and Christie want well, to look, stomp he, down on y'all. He, does, he doesn't like Rand Paul. He doesn't like Ted Cruz. Um, he doesn't like me, and I, I think that's pretty obvious. But let me let me also explain how he misleads. There, there's a the the liberal label he's getting is from this National Journal ranking, where they rate you as more liberal if you vote less often with leadership. So those who vote least often in leadership are ranked the most liberal in the Republican Party. Uh, the ones who are ranked the ones who are ranked most yeah. conservative are actually are actually probably the most liberal Republicans. And the ones who are most no, conservative are ranked the most liberal. No, I, I understand what it's you're like, saying. It's, it's I get backwards. it. I get it. Uh, before we go, we have almost no time. Uh, you, you called uh, Snowden a whistleblower uh, and, and not a traitor. You, you do know that the whistleblower protection act does not apply to people who work for the nsa or the cia or any intelligence yeah. services right you do know that oh yes yeah. so so why are you calling him a whistleblower that just seems a little bit sloppy well, no the the issue is not uh that whether it's a technically the term whistleblower the issue is whether he's mm. more like a whistleblower or a traitor no he's and a whistleblower a he would have gone up to you justin a, if he was a whistleblower he would have gone to you he wouldn't have run to, to hong kong and to, to our to our adversary russia as Laura, as you know, he can't go to me under the Whistleblower Protection Act. So he can't go to a member of Congress like me. He, he has to take certain channels. So yeah, nobody's saying he didn't break the law. The issue is whether he's more like a whistleblower or a traitor. And there's a, there's a specific term, yeah. uh, de definition of traitor in the Constitution. He doesn't no, mean Well, then there's a definition of whistleblower. I'm, I'm playing around with you here, but there's a definition <laughs> for both, yeah. right? I mean, he goes what? hanging out with Putin. That's not really a friend of the United States. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of no, glad but, we have this information, but he uh, he did some sure. damage, and uh, we have some information. So there are two things going on. He did well, damage, and we have he, some information, which is kind of a good if thing. He did something if he did something damaging to the United States, if he gave up people in the field, that's 
that, that's a different story you altogether. Know, uh, hey, we appreciate your joining us. Uh, Congressman Justin Amash on The Laura Ingram Show. A lot more to get to. Stay with us. The Laura Ingram Show.